Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 21st, although not really. I think it is. Yeah, it's supposed to be. <laughs> I'll explain. And it is a cool spring day here in southeast Pennsylvania, or at least it will be. Because it's actually not Sunday, it's Saturday night. I'm making this video a bit early because i got a very full day tomorrow and uh, I just wanted to get it out of the way and, and, and post it. Uh, I'll schedule it in the morning. You would never have known, but I, I can't lie. Yes, so, uh, got a lot to talk about today. It's uh, It's been a very interesting, last week was a very interesting week, and uh, it's probably going to make a difference in terms of my visibility here on YouTube. I may not be as frequently appearing as I have been in the past. I might not be able to do shows every week. Uh, I may not be able to do live streams. And uh, well, let me let me tell you the, the story, and then you'll, you'll probably understand that a bit more. But I wanted to let you know that these uh, these things are happening. So uh, first off, you, you know my wife's father-in-law has been up and down in terms of health. Well, he had a turn for the worse this week, and uh, he's, he's okay. He's in the hospital right now, uh, had a lot of fluid around his heart, uh, collapsed one of his lungs, so pretty, pretty significant stuff. Uh, they put him in a drain and they've gotten the fluid out. They obviously are treating him. His heart's fine. He's seen, his vitals are all good. And the plan is that he will uh, recover once they get the fluid out and uh, he's stable. They're going to put him in a, uh, in a nursing home for a while, a rehab type facility. And uh, he, you know, the hope is that he's going to be going home at some point. But uh, he's 92, I think. And, uh, you know, something like this is hard to recover from. So uh, I believe that he's going to be fine and we're going to have him for a, a, a good bit longer. But you never know. So... The wife is off to uh, to visit him tomorrow morning, and she'll be gone for about a week. And that's probably be going to be coming a more frequent thing because her mother uh, needs help. You know, the, 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 the father's a lot of a lot to handle. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, although he is a lot to handle. <laughs> and he'd laugh if he heard me say that. So. Anyway, she's going to be in and out a lot uh, in, in the coming months, perhaps the coming years. Uh, fortunately, she does have two sisters, one who lives very locally. There's a, one of her nieces is, uh, travels in frequently to help. So they got a lot of shared support. On the other side of the family, my, my family, uh, I have a brother. I don't think I've ever really talked about him. Uh, maybe I have. I have certainly probably have mentioned him on live stream and stuff. So, my brother's name is Scott. Scott is five years younger than me, and uh, he has autism. So, he's uh, always been, if you met Scott, you'd say, that's, that's a little odd. You know, he, he doesn't seem to be communicating the way people normally do. He seems to be very shy. He'll laugh nervously at things. Um, if you ask him a question, he'll, he's brilliant. He's, he's a very smart guy. But he might just like answer out of stress. So if you say, "Do you want this or that?" he'll just say the last thing he heard. Um, so in social situations like going out to restaurants, you have to talk to him ahead of time and make sure he understands what he wants, so that when the waitress comes, he can order it. You know, and if he's got everything straight in his mind, he he can handle it. But anyway, and he's he's a wonderful guy. He's uh, one of my favorite people in the world. I talk to him every week. We we have a lot of fun. Uh, He's got some special interests, as people with autism often do, and we, uh, we'll we talk about those things. We'll just make silly jokes and all that, and we've been doing this for years. Well, unfortunately, so Scott had what we thought was a urinary tract infection uh, that turned out to be a lot more than that. Uh, unfortunately, he has been diagnosed just by scans at this point with stage 3 colon cancer. Now, this is significantly yeah, you know, significant medical issue, obviously. I'm not concerned for him at this point. We don't know a lot beyond that. We know it hasn't spread. It's on the colon. And what it has done is it's caused a uh, fissure to form between his colon and his bladder, which is apparently something that happens in, in actually quite often. I didn't realize this, but it can be caused by inflammation. There's all sorts of things that can cause this. So... Um, 
he has to have the tumor removed. Obviously, he has to have this this uh, fissure repaired. And he, according to the hospital that he's in right now, is probably going to need chemotherapy, um, which would be uh, not not to treat a. How can I put this? There doesn't appear to be any metastasis. There doesn't appear to be any significant spreading, but. At the same time, this might be something that could, and therefore they want to make sure that they, you know, would eliminate it. Very similar to what I went through years ago, where my tumor was completely uh, confined, but because of its aggressive nature, the aggressive nature of the type of cancer, they wanted me to do both chemotherapy and radiation. So uh, I think Scott has a very good outlook. Um, well, I think his outlook is good. Let me put it that way. I, I don't. I'm not concerned about his life, but he cannot go through this on his own. He just can't. Um, as much as I'd like to think he can, my sister is with him. They they both live up there in Vermont. But my sister's got two kids and works, and she's a single parent, and you know there's just a lot going on, and she just. If she's taking care of him, she can't be working. If she can't be working, she's not going to be able to pay the bills. Anyway, something's got to happen here. I've got to help. And there's two possibilities, and I don't know which of those are going to happen right now. Uh, Scott might move here, and which would be great. And he could go to the hospital here and get his, his treatment, and I could take care of that easily. Uh, my wife would be around when she's here to, to help with that as well. Or he might have to do the treatments in Vermont, and if that's the case, I'm probably going to go up to Vermont for months. Uh, to, to I'm probably going to rent an apartment up there near the hospital and just have him move into that apartment with me, and we'll do it that way. I know that sounds extreme, but it's just the situation where there's no other way to do it. Um, and you know, it's my brother. I got to I got to do this. So that's what's happening right now. It's a lot. It was a very very complicated and hard to process week and I'm still kind of mentally processing a lot of this by the way it's a doodler with some at least several year old haunted bookshop that my buddy couch sent me so thank you couch um, I'm enjoying this and uh, we'll talk more about the haunted bookshop so the reason I'm telling you all this is first off if, if you would, please, I'd like you to pray both for my brother Scott and for my father-in-law, Ray. Uh, and importantly, don't just pray for them, but pray for the whole family because, the, you know, my wife is very upset right now because her dad is, you know, moving towards the end. I mean, it, it, it may not be for years, but it's obvious now that, you know, he's not going to be immortal. Um, and my brother uh, is... You know, my sister's upset and everything. I'm upset. So pray for the whole families. But, but in particular, pray for those two people. Pray for God to comfort them. And if it's his will, bring healing to them. Um, and if you're not the praying sort, you know, do whatever you do. Keep them in mind. I think even that helps. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the number one reason I wanted to tell you. Number two is I may not be able to keep up the schedule that I've been keeping up. So I'm not going to promise any Friday night live streams uh, for the near future. I'm going to try to do them, and I will put up, um, you know, the normal notifications that there's going to be a live stream. You'll see those as usual if there's going to be one. If not, I will try to put up a post on YouTube saying no live stream this Friday. I, I may not be able to do that, just depending on circumstances. We'll see how things go. Once things settle, I may be able to get back into a normal schedule. Um, either here or in Vermont. You know, maybe we'll do live streams from Vermont. Who knows? So we just got to see how it all develops. But I want to let you know about that just because it's going to make things here difficult. Uh, not difficult. Unpredictable. That's the word. So let me tell you a little bit about this age on a bookshop. Uh, Couch didn't know exactly how many years, but he said several. So let's guess three. And it's interesting. So I, I actually smoked, yesterday I was smoking a um, fresh haunted bookshop that had a date on it of, of February of uh, 2024. And you've heard me say many times that when you first get haunted bookshop, because Cornell and Deal makes it 
pretty much on demand. I mean, there's a lot of turnover. You're getting fresh stuff, and it takes a couple of weeks for it to just kind of settle down and meld and be, be as good as it can be. Now, this has been several years, and it is interesting. The Virginias are more forward in this. Uh, there's a bit more sweetness. It's a bit more mellow. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. If you don't like Haunted Bookshop, three-year-old Haunted Bookshop is probably not going to be your thing. But it's definitely smoothed out. And the Perik, yeah, the Perik's sneaky. You don't get as much of that Perik um, spiciness when you, when, you, when you smoke it, but the Retrohale actually seems to be a little bit more Periky. So it's, it's interesting, that uh, slight difference. And this is after, you know, doing them side by side, so I've got a pretty good memory of what Fresh on a Bookshop is like. Now, what I'd like to do at some point, before I, oh, by the way, Couch only sent me a small sample of this, so it's going to take me, <laughs> take me a bit of time to get through it. But at some point before this is gone, I have, I certainly have fresh stuff, and I have some jarred haunted bookshop that's got to be getting close to 10 years now. So I'm going to pull out some of that, and we'll do a direct comparison between new three-year-old and ten-year-old and see if there's any real significant difference. Most people say that Haunted Bookshop's not going to change much because it's thought of as a burly blend, but there's a lot of Red Virginia in there and the Perique does develop as well. So we'll see. It'll be, it'll be a fun little experiment. The other thing I wanted to update you on is I showed you that, uh, that pipe I was working on. Last week, the one that was the squared shank stumble that I turned into an oval shank. Uh, well, I rusticated it and stained it, and I gotta say, now I did this quick and dirty. This is my pipe, so there's there's some scratches on this. It's not perfect, but I am really pleased with the way this turned out. I really like the rustication. I think I've come up with a with a method that I, I'm happy with. It's got a really good feel in the hand. It's very tactile. Um, I like the contrast of that white stem with the with the dark, uh, that's actually a cordovan stain. It looks black, but it's it's more of a very, very dark brown. Furnace is going to come on. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with this. It's a little, it's a nose warmer. It's kind of short, you know, compared to other pipes, but pretty happy. So, yeah, we'll see. I've got more of these. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> I bought them to play with drilling. Hopefully that furnace isn't too annoying. I bought it to play with drilling, and that's what I've done so far, but, uh, you know, I'm probably going to be, I mean, just because I've got so many of these, I probably will offer some of these for, for sale at some point. Uh, I have no idea how to price these. I've never thought about pricing a pipe. Uh, you know, if it was something I made from a block of briar, I think I could probably put a fair price on it, but how do you, how do you price something like that? So let me know in the comments, first off, if you would be interested in that. Um, and I've got others, I've got billiards, I've, I've got a couple different shapes, I think I've got like a print shape. Is that something that folks would be interested in? And if so, what do you think is a fair price for for this? You know, on the one hand, the stummel was, the, the tobacco chamber is drilled and it's partially shaped, so it's less work. On the other hand, all of the internals are, you know, my quality. Uh, I was going to say artisan quality, but I don't consider myself an artisan by any stretch. But they're, they're well made internals. The stem is, a, is one of my stems, which I think I do make a pretty good stem. And uh, the other benefit of this is that you're getting aged briar. So this probably, this stumble was probably phrased about at least 30 years ago, maybe longer. Um, yeah, so this, this is, um, and the one that I have smoked so far, the one I haven't smoked this year, but the billiard that I made a while back and smoked, it smoked beautifully right out of the gate. You know, it was, it was really nice. The only problem with it was that I, I have put bowl coatings in. You can see there's a bowl coating in there. Because I think the briar is so well aged that it burns a little bit more than what people would be used to, certainly than what I would be used to. And I got some flavor off of that that only lasted a smoke or two, but it was different. And I thought, well, let me try the bowl coating and see how that works out. So. 
Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, is that something I should consider doing? Um, would, would people be interested? And what do you think would be a fair price point for something like that? So, what does tomorrow hold? Because <laughs> it is, I am sneakily doing this on Saturday night. Well, I gotta run some errands in the morning. I gotta get some yard work done. The, the weeds are starting to come in and I gotta get some roundup on the, the beds that aren't supposed to have weeds. And I get this big pine tree where the the fronds fall, I think they're called fronds, whatever whatever pine trees, bows are, are fallen over the years and have accumulated underneath it. I tell my wife it's pine straw, but she's not buying it anymore, so she wants me to clean that out. Uh, I'm gonna try to get that done tomorrow. So I wanna get an early start on that. Plus she's gonna head out to Pittsburgh. She wants to get out the door by about 11. So, and she's gonna need me to put suitcases in the car because that's what I do. So yeah, it's going to be a busy morning tomorrow. Uh, in the afternoon, I got other stuff to do. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll keep busy. And then it's a busy week at work. By the way, I should have mentioned that I'm very fortunate in my job. I've already checked with my boss, and I will be able to work remotely if I have to go to Vermont. So that's that's not a concern. In case anybody thought about that. I am really lucky that I've got the boss that I have and that I've got the job that I have because uh, when things like this come up, it, it's it's a huge load off my mind that I'm, I have that freedom. Plus, I basically do nothing, so it's easy to do it remotely. I, I think. I talk to people. Uh, I write. I analyze data. I write computer programs. I. I don't go into the lab anymore. In fact, the people that work for me in the lab will be relieved that I'm not there because they won't expect me to walk in and ruin something because I've, I've kind of gotten a reputation of being one of those old guys that doesn't understand the modern stuff. So, we'll see. Gee, I hope that furnace isn't really screwing us over because uh, on the live streams they say they can't hear it. Um, I sure can hear it. Anyway, I'm not going to re-record this. If this is horrible audio, I apologize, but obviously this was made under unusual circumstances. So with that, folks, I'm going to go. I'm going to go watch Spinguli and uh, have a Saturday night. I hope you all have a good Saturday night, a fantastic Sunday. I hope you had a good Saturday night. Uh, a fantastic Sunday. You're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to sounds of silence. I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.